Hey guys, I'm Kevin Tates working with LMC Truck to bring you some technical information and how-to videos that are going to help you with your truck project. In this video, we're going to be dealing with the brake system on a 67 to 72 GM truck and we'll show you how to replace the existing steel lines with a stainless steel pre-bent brake line set. Now, all of these lines are pre-bent very accurately to match the factory bends. And although it might look like a nest of snakes right now, the process is quite simple and we're going to walk you through it. LMC Truck also offers brake hoses and rear brake hoses for both leaf spring and coil spring vehicles, as well as all the hardware that you're going to need to mount your hard lines to the frame rail and the chassis. Now, although we're not dealing with it in this video, LMC Truck also offers wheel cylinders and drum brake rebuilding components, as well as a master cylinder. And we'll show you proper installation techniques for a master cylinder in this video as well. Now, the benefit of pre-bent brake lines is pretty darn obvious right here. This is a very difficult bend sequence to recreate. Now, pre-bent brake lines mean all you have to do is go to lmctruck.com or your LMC Truck catalog, pick them out, order them, and they'll show up on your doorstep. Now, Let's talk about tools. You're going to need basic hand tools, a combination wrench set and some sockets and socket wrenches. But this, this is necessary. These are flare nut wrenches or line wrenches and you need them to effectively disconnect your brake lines without tearing them up. Some brake cleaning spray is nice to have around and so is some penetrating oil for the rusty frozen fasteners that you're inevitably going to run into. As well as you're going to need some brake fluid, that's kind of obvious. Here's something that you're going to need if you're replacing a master cylinder like we are. This is a master cylinder bleeding kit. You can pick these up at any auto parts store and you've got to properly bleed the air out of the master cylinder and we'll show you how to do it. As far as safety goes, this is not a crazy dangerous project, but you are working under the truck, so have some safety glasses on hand and get some gloves since you're going to be handling brake fluid. Now, if you've just drug your truck out of the field, some insect spray may come in handy as well. And here's another thing too. Some water, just plain water, will neutralize the brake fluid in case you spill it on paint. You can keep it from eating the paint off your vehicle. Now, since brake fluid is going to leak out, some absorbing mats are easy to find at the parts store and they'll come in handy and keep things clean and environmentally friendly. A headlight, as goofy as it looks, is a really good idea and keeps your hands free to work while you're underneath the dark vehicle. Now the LMC truck catalog is really nice to have around because the illustrations are so accurate it can actually act as an assembly guide. Now on a difficulty scale, it's not that difficult. I'm going to give it a three and a half out of five, but you might want to set aside an entire weekend to do it so you can take your time and methodically do things the right way. Now let's take a look at the project. Now between the obviously leaking master cylinder with the paint stripped off the firewall and the spongy brake pedal that this truck has, the master cylinder is done. It's on its way out. <laughs> Right here, obviously we're missing a retaining clip, but right here the brake hose is almost worn through. And here again on the flex line, it's frayed and it, that's just dangerous. The steel brake lines, they're rusty and it's just too important and they're too easy to replace. So that's what we're going to do. Like we said, these lines are very accurately bent. So I just compared them to the lines on the truck and it gives me a road map to replace them one at a time. I've laid them out here. It makes perfect sense, except for this guy, which is bent like this for the purposes of shipping. So here's how to bend it back straight because it goes along the frame rail without using any expensive tools. And what you want to do is put the bend focused on the floor. So you're actually using the floor for support. Don't bend it like this because you could possibly kink the line. With it pushed on the floor, just gently, slowly bend it back straight kind of using different areas of the bend as support. One more bend here. All right, so it's not perfectly straight, but it doesn't have to be. It's clamped to the C-channel frame rail. So now we're ready for that piece to go in the truck. One more thing, LMC truck also offers junctions and unions. We've got one here, but we're going to try and reuse our originals and show you how to do the same. Now the back of the truck's the easiest to get to, so we're going to start here. And these are just little tabs. I'll have to bend them back. All right, that's loose. Clean 
this off so we can get a wrench on it. We'll remove the, the line from the wheel cylinder. Ooh, that doesn't want to cooperate, boy. The lines are rusted up. <laughs> okay. Now you want to try and keep from tearing up your brake lines, but right there, that shows us exactly why we need to replace them. It's just rusted. It's just rusted. We still got to get this guy out of the wheel cylinder. It's pretty easy right now. And for some reason, it's bone dry. Out of there. All righty. Now this bolt right here is just a retainer for the flex line in the union, and we're gonna remove it all. You don't even have to disconnect those lines. I'm gonna take it all off as one unit since it's all getting replaced. That goes away, and we're gonna keep the faster where it belongs so we don't have to track it down later. There's a clip right here that we're gonna get rid of holds the flex line to the frame rail and the new clip comes through the brake hose. All right. Now we can undo this guy. But since we're replacing everything, I'm just going to try and cut it right here. And we can still use it as a template if we need to. It's just going to be much easier. And that bothers me that there's no fluid in the rear circuit. I wonder if this thing's brakes were goofy. Now there's several of these clips that connect the brake lines and the fuel lines to the frame rail and they, they're easy to remove, they're easy to get to. You can reuse them if you want to. Or you can just get new ones from LMC Truck. Now, even though I've already pre-soaked this with penetrating oil, it's just hard to remove it. Oh, I think that's it. Oh, I think we got it. No, <laughs> it broke off. The bolt actually twisted in half. I don't care how it comes off, but it came off. Point is, it's been rusting since 1971, so I guess it's earned its, its uh, stubbornness. Now, here's the union we need to keep, and here's where your line wrenches come in handy. We want to keep the flats intact so we can reuse this piece. So your line wrenches will do exactly that. We're finally getting some, <laughs> finally getting some brake fluid out of the brake system. There we go. All right, now, if you're breaking this project up into afternoons or days on a weekend, now might be a good time to go ahead and replace what you just pulled out. That's what we're going to do. We're going to pre-assemble this T for the rear axle right here. But before you start putting stuff together, get used to doing this. We've got some brake cleaning spray. And don't assume that there's nothing in the lines. Don't assume that just because they're new, that they're perfect. Something may have crawled up in there. There may be debris from shipping. Blow them out. Make sure they're good and clean. That way you don't end up troubleshooting a problem that you don't need to that you don't need to even deal with. A little bit of preventative maintenance. This also kind of puts the exclamation point on the need for safety glasses too. Protect your eyes. Get that guy out of the way. And we know that this goes here. I just want to make sure these are seated. We're not even going to really snug them until we get them clocked in the right place. And by the way, never use Teflon ever on brake lines. They're designed to be a press fit. Teflon will seal the threads, but it won't seal the circuit. All right. Goes there. Yeah, right about there. All 
All we're going to do is start these threads just to give us some stability and a little bit of leverage to put their lines in their final place. Yep, good enough. These are brass fittings, you kind of get one shot. So you want to make sure the threads are seated and started properly, so you don't strip them. Okay, there it is. Started threaded by hand, and then you take your line wrench. And I'm not gonna fully tighten this until I've got all of the connections made but I am gonna run it in, which takes a while when you're doing one flat at a time. All right, that's good enough for now. Now we can put this slowly and carefully in behind the tabs. you can use the tabs as leverage to get everything set where it needs to be. There we go. There. 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 A little bit of love to the axle tabs. All right, now we can tighten up our union over here, work our way forward. Now I can give the lines a nice snug with my flare nut wrench. And we'll check them again when we bleed the system. We'll just check for any fluid leaks. You don't want to over tighten. There, nice. Now I've blown out my line, but I've got the rubber cap back on it, protecting it just in case as I'm feeding it in the frame rail, I jam some crud up into it and clean it out all over again. All right, that should be about it. All right, so my hard line's coming through there. And I connect now to my flex line. All right, now with that snug. Go up in there, and I've got a clip that'll slide back there. and lock that circuit right into place. Now this is our retaining clip. It's gonna lock it in place. It just gets tapped in. There it is. Now we're just gonna loosely bolt in our brake line retainer, and we're able to reuse one of the original ones. I'm just gonna hand nut it, We'll snug it down in order to secure and sure of the placement of the rest of the lines. All right, since this retainer was rusty, we're going to use one of the new ones from LMC Truck. All right, keep that a little bit loose in case we need to move the lines around. Okay, underneath the cross member of the truck, I'm up here and got my headlight on. <laughs> and even with the line wrenches, I still had to cut this line because a lot of these nuts are rounded off. However, we can still save the unions and the T fittings and get everything out of here and still retain the shape of the brake lines that we're pulling off so we can compare them to the ones that we're putting on. Now, even the lines in the junction up here is so hamburgered up, I can't even turn it with a pair of pliers, so I'm just going to cut them. And the ever alarming, nearly dry brake circuit. Okay, now we can get rid of these old lines. Oh, with the old. There's those guys. This is tight. There, okay. And we're going to 
keep that bolt. All right, so right now we're just going to go ahead and replace our flex lines with the copper washer on either side of the banjo bolt. And you know it's in the right way when the nub on the top falls into the channel on the caliper. There we go. Poifik. Oh, good gosh. There. And that's going to weep from the caliper for a little bit. All right, now we're rescuing our copper washers again, but I also want to make sure that my banjo bolts are good and clean. So we've got a fluid passage right there. The brake fluid has to go through. So we're good to go. Set our banjo bolt in. Make sure our copper washer is in place. Need a little bit of brake cleaner. And wipe the crust off of it. Because for some reason this side is a little bit more dirty. Alright. Perfect. We'll go there. We'll wait to connect that up with the other line. Give this a snug for now. Now our truck is rusty. There's no fresh paint anywhere. But if your restoration is fresh and you've got brake fluid dripping down here, it could eat the paint or even wrinkle the powder coat. So that's where water comes in. This is just H2O. And I'm literally dousing it and rinsing the brake fluid off with water. Water neutralizes the brake fluid and will stop its corrosive action right in its tracks. And now we're going to install the retaining clips that weren't even here when we started. Just like that. As we pulled the old lines off the truck, we compared them to the new prevent stainless steel lines, and it made it very easy to choose which ones to go back in and where to put them. Just like the others, we'll thread them in the fingertip first, and then come back and snuggle up later when it's all fit. Okay, we're going to reuse this original union to complete our brake line circuits. And this is where the line wrenches will save you parts and money. Look at that. Thank you, line wrench. Okay, this is our rear circuit going all the way to the back. This is the union we just borrowed, and it's going to the front. Actually, transitions into the back side of the master cylinder. So we just gotta get it threaded by hand. And now the side. All right. Maybe it'll thread in, maybe it won't. Sometimes, sometimes you get lucky. Sometimes you gotta pre-bend the lines just a bit. I think <laughs> we got lucky. All righty, we'll tighten him up in a little bit. So this is our new stainless line that goes to the rear circuit, and this is where it connects to. This goes up to the back side, the rear bowl of the master cylinder, the dual reservoir. This brass T fitting is new from LMC truck and it's going to connect this line to the line that goes to the front caliper on the driver's side to this line here that goes up to the front reservoir on the master cylinder. That we're replacing that line as well. So we're going to put our brass fitting in and replace the upper lines. Get a finger tight into the brass T and connect driver's side caliper line. All right, now our T's in there. This guy's ready. Now we're ready for these two new lines to go up to the master. All right, maybe like this. Oh, there we go. Okay, that's kind of what I figured. We're bone dry in the back, but we've still got some fluid in the front. Just using a bulb extractor, getting my brake fluid out. A turkey baster also works for this. It's a cheap tool. This is actually made for battery fluid, so we know it's going to withstand the brake fluid corrosiveness. And interestingly enough, our brake fluid is a, it's an interesting brown color, which means it's soaked with water and needs changed anyway. <laughs> we got some brake fluid on the paint, so I'm going to soak it with the water because 
We don't want to damage this awesome paint job. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna... Oh yeah, there we go. We're taking the master cylinder off. Because we're putting a new one on. And since we're here and they're unhooked at the bottom, we'll get our proportioning valve out of here too. Give it a good inspection, clean it up. So when replacing a master cylinder, you've always got to perform a bench bleed. It's a pretty simple procedure, but it's absolutely necessary. Basically what you're doing is purging the air out of the fluid passages of the master cylinder itself so that it pushes pure fluid and not air bubbles into the brake circuits front and rear. The master cylinder bleed kit comes with several different fittings. And since they're plastic, be very careful tightening them in. You want to make sure that you get an airtight fit. But you don't want to strip the threads. Okay, I've got two hoses for the front and rear reservoirs. And the clip is going to hold the hoses in. So we go to the rear, go to the front. We'll bring these guys around and connect them to the plastic fittings on the side. And make sure there's no kinks. All right. Now there's a new seal on every bottle of brake fluid. I like to use the smaller bottles of brake fluid. That way, if I don't use it all, if it sits on the shelf for two years and gets a bunch of moisture in it, it doesn't cost me a whole quart of fluid. I just use what I need. So now to use a flat screwdriver and actuate the master cylinder just like what happened if you, if you push the brake pedal inside the cab. And right now it's full of air. You can see the bubbles. You can see the fluid going back and forth between the bowls the reservoirs, rather, and the fittings. Now the foam is what you don't want to see. So if it starts to foam up like that, it's just a bunch of air bubbles. So give it a little bit of a break. Let the foam dissipate. The rear circuit reservoir, the back one, it's looking pretty good. I don't see any bubbles, but the front, we're still working. And I'm moving slower works better. And I can see a little, just a couple little more bubbles coming up through that hose. I'm not seeing any more bubbles. All right, with our master cylinder fully bled, it's gonna stay right here till we're ready to install it. We're gonna reuse the original proportioning valve for this truck. Since we're not changing the brakes up, drum in the rear, disc in the front. The prop valve, it's a big dumb animal. Unless it's damaged, it'll probably still work just fine. But we do want to clean it a little and give it a good inspection. Here's what we're looking for. Now you want to look down into where the fittings go. The internal flare, well it's brass. You don't want any damage on that. Ours look good. The backside look good. So now we're going to give it a quick shot. A brake cleaner. Important to wear glasses because this stuff can back feed. Yeah, okay, we're good here. I just want to make sure all the fluid passages are clear and everything is hunky dory. It's, it's a happy. One more thing, take my bleeder valve loose. Okay, good, good. We're back flushing and it's clear. Oh, there you go. All right, now we're gonna blow it out with some air and then we're ready for reinstallation.
right, we'll throw our bleeder valve back in. And while we're here, we're going to install the lines. Here's the prevent line for the rear brake circuit. Snug as a bug in a rug. All right, and these guys just kind of hang together like that. And you can see where they go together like that and meet the circuits down underneath the cross member. All right, now we'll install the proportioning valve and get ready for the master cylinder. We're on the home stretch. All right, I'm gonna feed the lines down right through here, carefully. It's a bit of a jigsaw puzzle, not too bad. And we'll loosely mount the prop valve on the firewall, just like that. Here's a line from the rear reservoir of the master cylinder that goes back to our rear brake circuit. And I'm gonna snug these in place right now. After I get everything snugged in, and after we make sure that there's no leaks in the system, then I'll clamp it all down to the frame rails and cross members. But I wanna be able to get access in case I gotta give these an extra little twist. There's that. All right, so the rear circuit's complete. Now, I'm gonna hold my brass T in place with an adjustable wrench and use the line wrench just to tighten up the line fittings. And I'll get the top line from the front reservoir of the master to the crossover for the front circuit. And I'll give it one little extra bit of love Okay, now everything's good and snug. Okay, now I'm gonna cap off these guys real quick so we don't lose any more fluid on the insulation. And there's that. Drain it back in. And now we can put this sucker in its new happy home. Make sure the brake plunger is in the right place. And it, it is. Oh, yeah. We're home. Okay. We'll leave that a little bit loose till we get our lines hooked up. Throw something down here to catch any brake fluid that might fall out. And we're going to get rid of our plastic fittings. We kind of hamburgered them up, tightening my little tight, but they're plastic fittings. Now we're gonna lose a little bit of fluid, not a whole lot. Just make sure the threads are caught there. Okay, there it caught. Thank you. Thank you, threads. Thank you, line wrench. Thank you, brand new fittings. Now we'll tighten the master cylinder against the firewall and give these a final snug. Now that we've got everything bolted in, all the lines are threaded, now I can go back and give a nice final good and tight snug on all of these line fittings with my flare nut wrench. Okay, there it is. Man, that looks fantastic. Except for the fact that I've got brake fluid all over my inner fender. Now the paint's garbage on here anyways, but if you had a nicely restored vehicle with good paint, Here's where your bottle of water comes in handy. Just neutralize all of that brake fluid. Now keep in mind, of course we need to bleed the brakes on this truck, but we've just shown you that it's an achievable and easy goal to completely replace all the original vintage carbon steel lines on this truck and install new stainless steel brake line sets that not only fit great, but they look great as well. Keep in mind you can look through LMC truck catalogs or go to lmctruck.com for other ideas on how to increase the performance and the looks of your 67 to 72 Chevy pickup. I'm Kevin Tates. Thanks for watching.